G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, 17 to 25 degrees C. Um, look, it's, it's one of those days today where there's a little bit of cloud and the sun there, so the sun comes out and the shed goes creak, bam, pop, and then the, a cloud comes across the sun, so she goes snap, crackle, pop again and expands and contracts and things like that. So, um, but I've I've been playing with the sound equipment and I'm pretty sure I've got all that dialed in and sorted out. And so, um, like it's creaking and banging now. You can hear that? I'm hoping you can't hear that because I think I've got it dialed out. <laughs> we'll see how bloody smart he is, this prick, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, a few storms came through last week and we ended up with 13 and a half millimetres of rain, which is... Um, for those in the USA, it's half an inch, pretty close, thereabouts. And um, yeah, look, it was needed. The people around us, like some people got 65, and um, our friends Mick and Margaret are over from Mergen at the moment, and um, Mick and I, oh, Margaret is a, um, a potter, and she, look, she's been a potter for many, many years, and they had a, a do, like a, an annual get-together at Moore Park, which is about... 20, 25 k's north of Bundaberg. So they thought they'd come for the week and spend a few days. Uh, they're retired now, so they spent a few days either side of the weekend. So um, yesterday I went and got Mick. I was there about, I'll come and get you. And um, yeah, we <laughs> I went up there and got Mick and we went for a drive down the beach for a look and stopped at Grunsky's to buy some prawns. And then, um, yeah, we came home and yeah, we sat and watched the Bathurst 1000. Um, V8 supercar race and yeah like we had bloody 20 beers and bloody eight prawns and Jude made sandwiches and then um, yeah they stayed for dinner and we had like pulled beef in the slow cooker and had a big feed and sat and watched a bit of YouTube last night so um, good to catch up again. Love Mick and Margaret when we used to live out in Mergen we used to live opposite the um, the Baramba Bush Retreat Caravan Park and um, we used to live out there and Mick was about three k's away and we were just young blokes, no money, but he, and he, he was a, he's, he is a mechanic and since then he's run Remco Engineering for many years, which he only sold a couple of years ago. So they're retired now and um, Mick and I and June and Margaret and have been mates and friends for many, many years. So it was good to catch up with them. They come to the Cape with us last year and um, yeah, tomorrow, um, June and my wedding anniversary tomorrow, it must be go 30, 35 years, poor woman. <laughs> but anyway, 35 years. So um, tomorrow we're going out for lunch. And um, yeah, Mick and Margaret are in town. So we said, come on in, yeah, come with us. So we're going to meet in town and have a bit of a lunch, sneak away from work. Um, yeah, why not? Um, the... The new couple that are buying the business, um, Dean, he's been in the shop all last week. And um, yeah, look, it's all going well. Um, he's, yeah, look, he's picking things up. He's, yeah, we're working okay. Um, my computer on my main desk, I told him, you know, I'd like to keep that because it's got some of my personal effects on it and things like that. So I popped downtown and bought him a new computer. And um, yeah, so when I left him on Friday, he was out, he was setting that up and his brother, his brother um, runs the point of, oh, he, he's a technician, computer technician. So he's got him on tap, hey, come and do this and look at this and how do I do that and all that. So I think, hey, how good is this? So, so we've set up the, the Dean at um, queenslandtractorspares.com.au websites and um, yeah, we're getting all the credit for applications coming through and we, we're trying to think of all the all the um, people that we have accounts with that they'll need accounts with too and you don't realise for a while and then how many there is and we spent a bit of time playing with the application for credit. Um, now we have a few, probably 50 companies I suppose have credit accounts with us but um, the with someone else taking over they've got to get them re-signed sort of thing because their company's going to be a different name to our company that was running it sort of thing so um, so they've got to get them redone, re-signed. Not that the council closed, um, 
you know, the people have had credit ratings with us for many, many years. That we've been going, by the time they take over, we'll have had the business for 26 and a half years, pretty well bang on. And, and so, um, yeah, getting the form sorted out and, you know, people agreeing to pay and, you know, by the credit terms and um, agreeing that, you know, if we've got to chase them for money, we can um, add the fees, add the cost of chasing them for money up, um, which is a mistake I made, like, early in the piece. I, I didn't have one of those signed and a bloke hit me for $5,000. And I took him to court and won the court case and, you know, we were going to send him bankrupt if he didn't pay, but um, because I didn't have that form in place, it cost me $900 to get my $5,000 back. And um, if I had the form signed back as a younger bloke, um, we could have hit him up for that money as well. You know, the, the, cost, of, um, the cost of getting the, um, the cost of the proceeding, yeah, the court proceeding to get the money back. So, so that was a bit of a lesson as a young bloke. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'll give you half of my office and I'm trying to share all this knowledge and all the potholes we fell in and all that along the way. So... Um, so they don't fall in them. So anyway, so that's been good. It's been a positive thing. Um, good to work with. Um, yeah, we can get on well with it. And um, they've got business. He's got a business mind, understands what we're doing. So that's a good thing. Um, the shed cleanup is still going on. I've got a bit sidetracked with this bloody flow meter. <laughs> um, but look, I, I'm still, I've been sweeping the floor and, I had young Chase from next door in here the other day and, and um, they, they had a pulley on a wood lathe and they had a new motor for the wood lathe but the pulley that they had was the wrong size, it was too small um, because the new, engine, the new electric motor had a larger shaft. So we put it on the lathe and we spun it out and I broached a keyway into it for him and so I said, while I'm doing that, and I said, this is cast iron, so you're making a mess of me lathe. So, so they had to clean my lathe up I didn't charge him anything, but they had to clean my lathe up for me and the young bloke zoomed around with the broom, keeping it all tidy for me. So, hey, how good's that? So that worked out okay. Um, but, yeah, mainly, look, I spent most afternoons this last week cleaning hydraulic fittings. Like, all the drawers are hydraulic fittings. I've been going through them and trying to collate the whole deal. Um, I'll still have probably one or two big drawers of fittings that are homemade... Um, I'm not chucking them out, no way. <laughs> but they're, they're homemade or they're some size. They're, they're not a common thing that I know what to do with, but I might be able to use them one day. And, and some of the fittings that are homemade, um, the value of those is if I need to make a fitting for myself, I can pop them in the lathe, part it off, grab this thread here, put a spigot on and grab another one and you know, make something that I haven't got here. And so... They're not getting chucked out at all. Um, Jason, who I bought the stuff off years ago, and it's just funny that I'm, I'm just onto the flow meter and that old Bill had and you know, the two flow meters that I'm working with and Jason that sold it to me on behalf of his dad back years ago, contacts me the other night and he says, oh, I found some more Fergie tools. He says, we're still going through the old man stuff, trying to get it organized and his shipping container sort of thing. And, um, and he said, we found some more. So it looks like they've found the, um, some more of the Massey Ferguson 100 series draft tools, draft setting tools, clutch aligning tools. Looks like a clutch finger tool. Um, so I said, I'd like this and that and that and that. And Jude's saying, Jude's there with me. We're just sitting in the lounge. And, um, and Jude says, how are we going to get that? That's all heavy to post. And I said, yeah, it does look a bit heavy to post, but he's got more. <laughs> she said, well, what are we going to do? And I says, well, if you and I retired in a month's time, I might just chuck you in the ute and we'll go, we'll go for a drive. And she says, oh, what, drive down there to Sydney to pick it up? I said, yeah, <laughs> that sounds like a bloody good idea. So anyway, so he's going to show me some stuff over the next coming weeks. And, and yeah, there's helicoil kits. There's some really nice old reams. And um, look, I, I, have, I have kits of reams. I've got one big drawer full of reams and I've had the guides and all that, but... The old fella had some lovely reams with the guides and I imagine they'd be doing stuff on Fergie's. Um, he's got some stuff for on, uh, on the head of the Fergie, how you have your, your, um, your two little valves in the head on the, on the um, hydraulic pump. 
to cut the seats and it looks like a genuine tool with a handle for cutting the seats in those. Um, I do have one for a TE20 and that's a, <laughs> that's a video coming up. Um, like, uh, we are retiring, like we're coming up retiring, but what that's done to me, <laughs> it's, I'm looking around, I'm thinking, yeah, that pump, I'm not going to chuck that out, I'm going to keep that, I want to do a video on that, I've always wanted to do one, and I've always wanted to do a video on the John Deere hydraulic pump, and I've got one tucked away, and I've got it out, and got it ready to go. Um, water pump kits, like, um, in today's throwaway society, back as I was a young man, there was no such thing as replace the water pump, you, you got a bearing and a seal, and, a, and you put them in, and I remember when I was working for Case, I had a run, and I, I used to do quite a lot of them. And I had a run and I reckon I stuffed up two or three in a row, you know, and I bloody, I thought these bloody water pumps, bastard things. <laughs> and they were David Brown ones, yeah, where we'd get, them, get the impeller machine flat and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I just had a bad run. I, I'll never forget it. And I was thinking, what, what am I doing wrong here? But anyway, I, I still know what I did wrong, but I know, um, I know how to do them and I don't seem to bugger them up now. So <laughs> that's a good thing. But yeah, I've got a... Um, I've got a kit for David Brown, I've got a kit for the old water pump out of the Perkins, the A4203, AD4203. Um, I've got a John Deere one from the 1640 John Deere. So what the plan is, is um, like on the old 880 out the back, I'm going to pull the water pump off the 880, bring it in, do it, service it, put a new kit through it, get it all ready to go, and I'm just going to sit it here and just sit it in my stock and... The spare 1640 out the back, I was going to take the water pump off that, um, run a kit through it, and ju just for the sake of the videos is what I'm looking at, but um, I do have, I think it's over on the other bench now, I have a, um, uh, it's actually a Sparex TEA 20 water pump that a bloke returned for warranty, and um, yeah, it was 12 months oldish and it started leaking out the seal, so um, I'm going to pull that apart just to just to see what's going on there, um, see what's happening. And, um, but yeah, I'm finding bits and pieces that, um, just little bench jobs. I, I seem better at bench jobs than the other stuff, you know, for filming and all that. So um, I'm gonna find a few of these little jobs to do. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just lining them up at the moment. I'm making sure I've got the parts and there's no use having a water pump sitting there if you haven't got the kit yet and things like that. So we're sorting all that out. Um, CRC, we have a, uh, CRC stock order coming in so that's good and apparently I can I've got enough up my sleeve to have another one before the end of April next year when our contracts um, renewable so yeah that's a good thing um, but yeah look the main thing I have been doing is is that flow meter and what I might do I might um, go handheld I'll um, I'll probably set the camera up just so I can talk you through what I'm doing and um, I went and bought some new gauges with those those test hoses on them, and they all say BSP or NPT, but I don't think there's the dog up the other end. The the bloody dog, um, the dog's been pissing off. Like there's a horse next door, and she goes over in the paddock near the near the horse and mucks around over there. Doesn't chase the horse. Probably eats horse shit, I reckon, and. Old mate up the back, I see the dog coming out of his direction the other day and she's just been pissing off and then when I call her and that, she doesn't come straight back. You know, you can see what she's doing sometimes and she sort of comes away but, and now she's got it. So what, I, what I'm looking at um, is I've got her on the chain that I used to have Kelly Dog on out the front just so I can keep an eye on where she is, what she's doing and things like that. But she's trying to get over under my chair and she's got herself tangled up now. So, so just so I haven't got to worry about it because it's a pain in the ass. You go to find the dog, where's Sansa? And you have a look around and nah, can't find her and you're whistling, cooey and carry on. And next thing she comes trotting out of the bush or something like that. Bloody nuisance. It's, it's a worry. So anyway. But look, I'll go handheld now. I'll take you over to the bench and... I'll show you what I've been doing with the flow meter. Okay, that's the test bench, or the, the flow meter. Now, you can see I've bought all new glycerin filled gauges. They're the best that Chinese can buy, the JZW brand. But look, some of their BSP and NPTs, they say NPT and it'll be BSP, and they're all over the shop really. But anyway, um, 
For these fittings here, for these test hoses, they're just your quarter BSP male nipples and I've had to machine the end off them because in the end of the, um, see normally the hose goes straight to a gauge like that and the gauge has a little male spigot and an o-ring on the end then this comes up and seals on that so um, I had to make these the fittings like that so they've been put on the lathe and turned in. Um, I've got a lot of test fittings here now I bought extra test fittings and I do have some coming the proper staff type test fittings and you may notice that on the top of the flow meter here we had a big gauge that had a big hose and it come along and the gauge ended up going up over to the top there so what I've done now is I've put a test fitting in there so whichever gauge I would like to use along here um, I've got 8,000 psi, 5,000, 3,500, 1,400 and 350 pounds per square inch so I can hook any of those hoses straight to that diagnostic receptacle there so that's going good and all the blue pots here that's all my fitting so far that's just the BSP nipples one um, now there might be BSP and NPT jumbled up in there I haven't gone like I've just gone by look not measure so um, two three four five six seven eight eight of those plus another one over the side there and what also came in last week I'll just shift these over and kits out of the way is I hopped on Amazon and I bought a heap more corks so what are you doing with that lens? Making home brew? Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, these corks, back in the day when somebody painted a tractor, when well, the factories actually, they'd have a thread that they weren't using, you know, to bolt a weight frame onto or a front end loader or something like that. And a lot of times the thread would be cleaned out, blown dry and, you know, sorted out. But there would have been a cork screwed into the thread and they painted across the top of the cork and that was how they kept all the dirt and dust and moisture and all out of the cork. So I jumped on Amazon, oh, probably 12 months ago and I bought some, but the other day I just picked up some more and they're on little kits, about $18 for a kit. Now this one, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the ball, but anyway, I throw it for the dog. But yeah, there's some quite large plugs in here. And I was looking at this the other day, and I thought that'd be ideal to make a float out of by the look of it, wouldn't it? Like a, a carburetor float. But, but yeah, these are just bigger ones. Um, yeah, for bigger holes, like inch and things like that. So, so that's just stuff to tuck aside for the tractor restorations. So, anyway, we'll come around to the bench here. And I'll set the camera up and we'll have a bit of a chat about what's going on there. Okay, a few things on the bench here. Um, these are the hose fittings for making my own hose. I have the hose here now, so I'll probably just do a quick video on how to fit a reusable hose end. They're, they've got the two little lines around there, so they're double braid hoses. So we'll cover that shortly. Um, up the back, what I've had, like this is a... This is a 5C collet, very common. I think Hardings might have invented them years ago. I wouldn't be 100% sure about that though. But what I've had up the back from Edge Technology, and I've had this for ages, is a, is a stop. Now, you can put this collet in a milling block or in a, in a 5C chuck, and as you draw it back, it, it, it compresses that and it'll hold onto something round for you. I've got them for hex and square, but what this does here, it's got a little bar there and you can loosen the bar with an Allen key and this actually screws up the back of the 5C collet and this becomes a depth stop and we have all shapes and sizes of depth stops um, for different jobs, you know, even tiny little fine ones to come up through the back and sit in the back here. So, so what's that doing on my bench down here? Well. I was buggering around at home there, up at the house. Um, now I've changed 
the lathe and that to up the back here, and this is something that I'd look, probably use more on the mill. Oh, but I do use it on the lathe, and yeah, so that's got to come up the back now. There's no no use up there, so I've got it up here. I've got to find a nice spot for it. Um, and the other thing is, it's a a single knurl tool. Now, you'll see, I bought the bigger one that had the 20 millimeter um, shank on it. And I milled that down to 16, which suits my 201-20, um, 200, 250-201 holders. And for the different, um, for the different levers, you know, hand levers doing little engines and things like that, I have quite a few different um, single knurls, you know, just for, that's, that's a nice fine little one. Um, just for putting knurls on little knobs and things like that, so, so. That's a little cross knurl. So that's up here to find a new home. I need to um, find a place, find a thing to do with that. Now these gauges here, um, I'll bring them up a bit so the camera can see them. Now these are the old gauges off the New Way flow test kit. And I was looking at them the other day and apart from the, you know, the, the front screens being rubbish and there's one that's all melted up. Um, but I had one gauge with a, with a proper um, glass. It's not glass, it's actually like acrylic perspex type of thing. And I, so I got to looking at these gauges and when I, when I test them with the air hose, like I haven't even started the compressor today, that's just residual pressure. 10, 20, 30 pound there, and I'll do it to some of these other ones here. It's about 25 pounds, same gauge, but um, but look, what I'm thinking of doing is just go to town and buy some of this acrylic and use the laser or the CNC and just cut myself some new gauges, or some new faces for the gauges. Now, the the gauges have little slots in the side of them and the fronts are held on with these these little screws. So there's nothing at all to stop me. Um, I'll, I'll probably try and get a bit of brake cleaner or something and, and see how how clean I can get these faces. Um, it'll be a bit of a job yeah, trying not to rub the, <laughs> rub the numbers off it. But anyway, I'll, I'll get it as good as I feel I can. And I think if I just cut a few glasses like that, I can cut a glass, I can pop it on and we're back to a gauge that's got a protective screen on it that we can probably read. Now, um, I probably will put them in a T-piece with the digital gauge and just check them for accuracy because um, they are very old. They're proper new day, N-U-D-A-Y gauges. And even this big gauge here, um, I can put air up that and I can actually get it to... So it's just moving a little bit, like 30 pound, you wouldn't see it on a 500 pound gauge, on a 5,000 pound gauge, sorry. But look, what it does is, without the front on there, this was the gauge that used to go from the flow meter across to the lid, this gauge was on the lid for the flow meter and I've, I've taken this off and I've put a diagnostic receptacle there now so I can use any of the other gauges, but I may put this back on if, um, you know, if that's what we'd like to do, if I, if I deem that sensible to do. So once again, it's the same setup. So yeah, all I have to do is cut a piece of acrylic, put a nice new front on it and it should be okay. The other thing I do like about these gauges is they're recalibratable to a point. So there's a little screw there and you can adjust the point where zero is. So that's right on zero there. So what I would do with that is okay so that's a 400 pound gauge 
I'd probably put it on the air compressor and if, it, if the digital gauge says, say, 120 pound, I wouldn't set it at zero, I'd set so so up in this range here was accurate. So, um, yeah, if it, yeah, this one here, it's had a bit of a harder life. But, um, yeah, we could set the zero, whoops. We come back to the same place. Yep, seems to. So this one here, we could just get him on the zero, but but yeah, what I was saying is if I've got 100 psi um, air pressure here and I've got the digital gauge says 100 pounds per square inch and this gauge says 100 pounds per square inch, so I can adjust it so it's accurate up in that range there somewhere. Look, and it may be dead accurate anyway because they made things nicely back in the day. But, so these aren't getting chucked out, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping those fellas and... Um, they may end, even end up back on the unit if I can, um, if I know they're accurate and they'll be okay. So, but yeah, they <laughs> they copped a bit of a hiding, didn't they? Um, look at that one. I don't know what got into that one, but that's completely just crumbling away. So, yeah, so I think that's a project worth continuing on with. So, we'll see how we go there. Um, and yeah, all these other ones, the the other flow meter which is here. Um, I haven't screwed all these fittings in properly yet and just haven't got there. Um, and look, what I, I use the Bearco R51, which is Loctite 515, and all these little nipples and things like that, I just put a smear of that because, um, actually Vincent Burrow sent me some stuff through the week on hydraulic fittings and things like that, and I read through it. I just enjoy reading bits and pieces. And they were saying that JIC fittings with the um, with the proper 37 degree flare um, is a good thing and the UN O-ring's a good thing but there was actually comment in there about these tapered fittings like your BSP tapers which is in, an NPT I think they mentioned these tapered ones well they're not a positive seal like the others so much which I've I've known that in the past so um, see that's a JIC with the taper there and that taper seals nicely on that taper and you've got a good positive seal. But the tapered thread just relies on the taper and the thread only to seal. So what I do with them, um, only on the male end, not the female end, I get my finger in there and I just put a nice smear of 515 around the fitting and then I put it in and I know that once I do that fitting up tight, that, um, that thread won't leak. Um, you can still get it out. Um, with the 515, if a little bit goes inside um, where the hydraulic oil goes, um, it just washes away. Like it's, it, it's that minute that um, when oil comes through later, it just dissipates into the oil. So, so anyway, that's what's going on there. <laughs> All right, that might do for the stew this week. Uh, I do have some chains to make. Um, I may show that and we'll see how we go from there. But have a good week, everyone. Thanks for dropping by and... Yeah, we'll catch you all next week, eh?